In this lesson, I want to introduce you to the rich text input and within Bubble. So when you're building in Bubble, you may have encountered using the multi-line input here. And just uh, for the sake of reference here, let me just draw one on the page. So you might have been using one of these and you're missing some of the formatting features that you'd really like, like being able to make text bold or italicizing, or maybe even inserting an image. And you found that the standard multi-line input just isn't cutting it. So uh, thankfully, there are a couple of options in the forms of plugins that you can use to make things a little bit, uh, no pun intended, richer. So what we can do is just go to add plugins here. And what I'm going to do is to search for one called rich text. So when we search for this, we're going to see a few other options as well. So. Uh, sometimes this takes a little bit of a time to load here, but so there are some free options and paid options. The one that we're going to use is by Bubble, and the reason why it's not default in the application is that even though Bubble created this, it's if they put in all these plugins off the bat, it would really add a whole lot of bloat to applications and slow things down considerably. So let's go ahead and just install this one for the sake of our example that we'll use in our application. So now we have this thing called a rich text input that we can use. Okay, now for the purposes of our example here, I actually want to for us to be able to create something in the database that we're going to use as our reference point. So instead of just having an input here, we're going to say, pretend like we're editing a blog post as we would on a blogging platform. So typically what it's doing is it's saving something in the background. Uh, you can call it a draft so that if we navigate away from the page, we haven't lost everything that we've created. So I'm going to use that same sort of logic in mind. Now, and on the right, I just drew a group, which is going to be our preview for this thing. And let's go ahead and just draw a group around these two elements. So, First, what I'm going to do here, this is just a little bit of logistics for our tutorial, um, and we'll have a button to create a new post, and we'll say, just really simple, I'm getting this set up so that, so this will create a new post, and so we'll go into, oops, create a new thing, and a post here, and this is just a data type that I had in the background before, and uh, we're not going to plug in any fields just yet, but we're going to have those a little bit later. And then what we're going to do is a display data action in that group here, so group A, and we're going to need to change group A's type to post, so that group that we just created here, so that way it can receive that information. So we'll change that to post. So now our workflow can display that in there. So now we'll display data in that results of step one, and we'll also say this group is visible uh, when, or we'll just have a show action for when that happens. Okay, so great. So that's going to display information in there. And what this is going to do is to just uh, be the parent group posts text value. So when that's saved there, and then we'll do a action on here that says when the value is changed, we're going to update our post content. So parent group posts, We'll say when the value is changed to just reference the rich text inputs content. So of course, this might be a little bit workflow intensive. There are a couple of other ways that we could construct this, but this is just for the sake of example here. So let's go ahead and explore what it is that we have here. So now if we preview here, so we'll create a new post. Hopefully everything should show up and we'll say this is some um, text. And so notice it just had our save action in the background. We can experiment, make some things bold. We can italicize, we can underline. So, and we can just choose our options up here and we can do that and we can do that. So great. So notice it's saving all of that automatically. And we have this thing in the database in the background that we're already making use of. And part of the other reason why I wanted to have something in the database is to show how this information is actually saved. So if we go into data and we go into our app data and under posts, so this record that I created, you'll be able to see a little bit of how that's actually formatted. 
So it's not quite clear to see off the bat. We need to click into here, but notice it adds these tags. Uh, so it has a B and a slash B and a little bit of bracketing around that. And for italicize, it's kind of what you would expect. So effectively what this is using, what is what's called BB code. And BB code is a simple way of being able to display uh, information with different formatting. So you can think of it a little bit like HTML. And now let's go back and kick things up a notch here. So I'm just going to hit cancel over here. So now let's say that we want to experiment, experiment with adding some images in here. So uh, off the bat, we have the ability to add an image based on a URL. And at first, this might be a little bit frustrating because you're like, well, you know, I want to let the user just um, automatically insert an image based on a URL. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of a group like this, the way that BB code works is it's relying on an image that's hosted somewhere on the web. So that could be hosted in your bubble application or it could be hosted somewhere else. It just needs to be an image on the web. So just for the sake of example here, I have this wonderful picture of a giraffe. Whoops. <laughs> so we'll close that there. And we'll just pop that in here. So, and notice, oh, so we have, I actually had a different image in the background there. So let's go ahead and choose our draft uh, image URL again. So we'll take this here and we'll go ahead and paste this in here. So this is probably a giant oversized image, but uh, let's go ahead and take one more click, uh, click on this. There we go. So I believe that is now a usable image URL. All right, great. So, and we can click out of there. So notice it added our image in there, but of course this is cropped just as a result of this not being properly formatted and sized to that. So there are a bunch of other things that we can do to tweak and make sure that images show up in the right sizing, but I'm not gonna quite cover that in this uh, lesson here. But what I do want to get into is saying, how can you uh, make this so that you can use images within your own system? So let's go ahead and start with um, saying that we want to give users the ability to upload an image here. So I'm just going to pop an image uploader here. And what we're going to do is to say that when an image is uploaded, we're going to update the values to append that image to the end of our uh, blog post that we're creating here. So we'll hit start edit workflow. So to say when the value is changed, meaning when an image is uploaded, we're going to make changes to a thing. And the thing that we're going to change is going to be group posts post. And we're going to change the text to be our uh, post current text value. But we're also going to insert a little bit of custom VB code here. So we'll type an image just as we did before, as you saw with the, uh, when we're making things in bold, when we're making things underlined. Right here, we're just going to use the code that relates directly to inserting an image. And between these two, what we're going to do is to insert the picture uploader's uh, values URL here. So. And now, so when this is updated, this should, in theory, make our image appear as part of that group. So let's go ahead and give this a try. All right, so go, let's go ahead and hit new post there and we'll call it, and this is a test. So we can see our text is appearing. So we've got things pretty much set up there correctly. But what we can do now is just go ahead and say that we want to insert an image here. Great. So now notice it displayed our uh, image value over here in terms of our actual input here. And we might want to add some conditions in here to actually refresh the content here because notice this actually didn't upload update to show the, the new content of our post group here. So let's go ahead and so we'll uh, try a, adding a reset data action. And we'll also do another display data in our group here of group post of results of step one. OK, so let's go ahead and see if that does the trick for us. 
And you know, I'm gonna do one more thing here because you notice how things were kind of nesting on the same line there. Let's go ahead and uh, so give that a little bit more space. Okay, so this is a test. And let's go ahead and try uploading an image here. And so pop that in here. Oops, so let's see. Let's try one more experiment here. So it looks like our, oh, you know what? We didn't set up our initial content here to match what our group is. So what we'll do is we'll say group post post text, and then that should do the trick. So it's always the little things that you might forget to plug in there. <laughs> so, okay, we'll hit new post one more time and say, this is a test. All right, now let's go ahead and try adding an image here. Try another object there. And great, so notice that our, uh, our image is also now appearing in our group here, so we can continue to edit here and content will be updated. So this is a great way for you to be able to dynamically insert things um, in terms of images. There's a lot more that you can explore here. There's uh, most of the tools you'll find are fairly intuitive when it comes to coloration, making lists bulleted or numbered, justifying things. But I think the image loader component is one of those things that can really trip a lot of people up, but this is a great way of getting around it. So otherwise, if you have any questions on this lesson, uh, please feel free to reach out. Happy to help. All right. Happy building.